Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Festival Secrets with Yakuza Barber. Hi, this is Julia from Booksy, and I will be your moderator today as our amazing host, Kevin, aka Yakuza Barber, tells us all about what it is like to work backstage at some of the biggest music festivals in the country. Cannot wait to get started. I am dropping a quick note in the chat so that everyone knows it says, welcome to today's webinar. Add your questions for Kevin here. So if you have any questions as you go, drop those questions in the chat. I will be keeping an eye out for them and I'll hand them over so that we can get them answered for you. And now to kick things off, Kevin, I'm going to hand things over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and why we should be so excited that you're here for today's webinar. Thank you, Julia. So as you guys know, Yakuza Barber, Kevin Nguyen. Uh, I am a multi-award winning barber. I've, I've cut celebrities. I, I've, um, I'm the lead wall educator for uh, the U.S. team. And uh, I've been doing a lot of these festivals backstage and everything. So um, I'm here to help you guys grow in the industry because, you know, not only do I also elevate myself, but I like to help elevate others. So tune in leave the comments, leave the questions, you know, I'll answer everything for you guys or what you guys need to know on this. Beautiful. And Lily, that is an awesome question. We will get to that in just a moment. But first, let me just quick share the screen so that you guys have some sense of what we're talking about here. So when we say Yakuza Barber, this is what we mean. Definitely make sure that you are going and following him on Instagram. I've just dropped the link in the chat. If you're watching this after the fact on our YouTube channel, you'll see the link down in the description as well. But make sure that you go check out some of this really, truly spectacular content. During the course of our conversation today, we are going to be looking at some really great info from past festival events. And we are also going to be talking about an upcoming contest that we have where Kevin, AKA Yakuza Barber again, is going to be giving the lowdown on what it takes to really be successful and get noticed backstage. So let me get Kevin up here focused again. And before we kick in, we are just going to start with, saw a really great question from Lily. Lily's wondering, uh, this is slightly off topic, but it's so good. What's your technique when it comes to fading for thick black hair and then thin, lumpy, multicolored hair? Uh, I'm an educator for a reason, right? <laughs> so uh, definitely the, the, the right tool, right? So the right tool. And it's a great question because uh, cutting backstage, you're going you're gonna to encounter a lot of different hair textures. So bringing the right tools, um, having the right method, the, the right technique to uh, help you understand different kinds of hairs it's very important because uh, backstage, you're gonna get all sorts of clients, all sorts of hair textures. So the right tool and the right method is very important. That's brilliant. And since we had that excellent question about tools and techniques, why don't we start there? So when it comes to, when it comes to the tools, when it comes to doing this sort of on the go lifestyle where you're all of a sudden, you know, maybe traveling partway across the country, you're going backstage and you have no idea who it is you're going to see or what they're going to be asking for. How do you prepare yourself in terms of your supplies, what you're bringing? How do you set yourself up for success? Great question. Uh, I bring, I try to bring everything. Just be overprepared. You know, I always follow the five P's in life. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. And I'll follow through that all the way through. So understanding, bringing all the clippers, almost all the clippers that you have, cordless is even better because you're going to be around, you're going to be backstage, you're going to be maybe on stage cutting too. So having all sorts of clippers and trimmers help out a lot. Uh, products, hairspray, pomade, wax, blow dryer. I mean, bring everything, enhancements if they want it. So just be overprepared because it's just way better for you. And to be underprepared is just bad on your end. You know, so imagine you cutting up a celebrity and the celebrity asks, hey, do you have this product? And you tell them, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Well, guess what? They're going to jump to that next barber there and be like, oh, do you have it? And they say, yes. Well, guess what? You're going to be my barber. You're going to be my stylist. So being overprepared is very important. So it, it kind of sounds like you might be speaking from from some experience there. Do you do you have a story for us on that that you might want to share? I, I do. Uh, one of my clients uh, in, in Beverly Hills, uh, what is it? Um, he he uh, wanted some mousse in his hair. And usually I don't 
carry moose. I mean, like it's a very random product to carry around, you know? So I had everything else but moose. And when I was cutting his hair down, he's like, oh, can you put some moose in my hair? And I'm like, when's the last time I bought moose? Period. You know, like when I, when do I ever use moose? So just having that product, uh, it was one of my um, celebrity clients. I don't know if you guys know uh, LeBron James kids, Bronny and Bryce. I was cutting up Bryce and he was like, oh, I like moose in my hair. I'm like, perfect, because I don't have any for you. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> so so you've heard it here. Even even the best can have that happen to them. But as soon as you've heard yes. from someone, that is the thing. Then now you store that, you take that with you. We are all going to be stronger professionals from knowing this about being prepared. So just to take a minute, yeah. shout out a few people in our audience. Hello, Celicia. Hello, Michaela. Salvador. Louise, uh, Eric, I see Eric from Idle Hand is here. Hello, Eric. We will be talking in a little bit about Eric, about Idle Hand specifically, and about Idle Hand and Booksy and what that looks like. So to give you all some context, there is a contest happening right now. There's a contest and it's called Get Discovered Backstage. You might have gotten a sense of that from the title of today's webinar, where Booksy providers all around the U.S. will have the opportunity to go backstage and work at some of the biggest festivals in the U.S. throughout the rest of the year, which is just really, really cool. And that, Kevin, is why we are so excited to have you here today, because you have been doing this around yes. the country. So tell us a little bit about what's that been like? Um, it's, it's been a, a huge blessing. You know, um, I always like to network everywhere I go and ha being backstage, having the opportunity is one of the best ways you can network because you're talking to DJs, you're talking to artists, you're talking to um, uh, artist managers, production teams, you're talking to the whole the whole uh, team. So just having that, that opportunity and having that networking uh, built for yourself is very important because I always see it as this, you know, your network is your net worth. And the more you network, the more you know, the more connected you are in the industry. So this is a great opportunity for everyone here. Yeah, that's brilliant. So I've just asked in the chat, what would you like to know about working at festivals? So this is a great opportunity. I Don't get me wrong. I have a whole list of questions, but I'd love to actually get all of your questions answered. So as you have questions about anything that you're hearing today, toss those in the chat. We'll get them answered for you. And in the meantime, can you tell us about uh, one or two of the festivals that you've done recently and uh, just maybe maybe any specific experiences from, from one of them that you'd like to share? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was at Hard Fest Summer over the weekend. Uh, it was it was amazing. You know, there's a packed crowd. You get VIP access. You get the artist lounge access. Uh, I was on stage too, you know. I, I have connections with these DJs now. Now that they've seen me there, you know, they pass by the barber shop and they say, What's up to me? They come by, shake my hand. I'm like, wow, this guy's famous. This guy's really famous. He has he has over a million followers and is coming up to me. He recognizes me because I'm here, I show up, um, I'm backstage cutting and, and uh, we're building a relationship now, that that bond between us. So that's amazing already, you know. Being on stage is another incident where we're like I uh, cut up a, was a DJ scheme and I just bumped into him yesterday. You know, we took pictures together, we connected and being on stage with him, recording him, jumping on the stage and playing his set. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I'm on stage right next to him and I'm just a barber. Like, like not a lot of barbers get that access to be on stage, right? So I see, I'm seeing this crowd, this huge crowd. Not even people are allowed in the VIP section. Not a, lot, not a lot of people are allowed in the front row, but I'm over here on stage with this guy. So those opportunities can happen at these events. Absolutely. And just just because you specifically mentioned DJs and scheme, I just have to I just have to highlight this. So if you're not already following Yakuza Barber on Instagram, what are you doing with your life, first of all? But you definitely should just to see this awesome content. Like, look at this photo. This is spectacular. This is, it's just, this is so cool. Um, now, I'm going to ask yeah, you a little you. bit later about taking these photos and getting this content. But we have some really great questions in the chat, which is wonderful. So let's start there. Let me get you highlighted first again. Here we go. And uh, Michaela is wondering, what kind of licensing do you need? And this is a great question, not just for people who are going to work at festivals, but also for people who get asked to work at trade show type things. So can you talk a little bit yep. about 
what, if anything, you have to pay attention to when it comes to licensing. And Michaela's example is, so I'm licensed in California. Can I only work for California festivals? So talk to us a little bit about that. No, you can work at other events as well. I've worked in a Vegas backstage. Uh, there's only if you're licensed for, for barber or cosmetologist, you are good to go because there's not state board at these events. You know, they're not even allowed. They don't have that access to go where we're at. So don't, don't worry about them. So having a license uh, makes you a professional. So a barber license, a cosmetologist license, you are good to go. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Michaela. That was a great question. So it sounds like what I'm hearing from you is because you are being there specifically for the event versus saying going to work at a shop that's in mm -hmm. Vegas or wherever. That's it sounds like that's the big difference there. Yeah, if say boy rolls up on you, guess what? Security's gonna stop him at the door. I'm sorry, <laughs> you don't have the credentials to be back here. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Yaslin, I see your question. We're going to get to that in just a moment because I will show you exactly how that works. But we're going to start with uh, Louise Louise first. Louise says, since I'm a barber, I focus mainly on men's barbering. What if it came to the point where they would need braids or something I couldn't perform? So can you talk to us a little bit about, let's start with what are some of the things that you get asked when, you know, DJ Scheme sits down in your chair for the first time? Uh, I'm glad uh, someone asked that question because uh, we do have a team of braiders and a team of barbers at this event. So you won't have to necessarily do braid. It would be better for you if you knew how to braid because you know you'll you'll get that that uh the, the tip money because you know you're there to to um to inter interact with these these uh, artists and these DJs and you know, they'll tip you out. So having that skill trade would be good, but it's not necessarily needed because we have art other artists for that. But um. Uh, for me, being a barber, I, I, I don't know how to braid hair. You know, I, I do razor work, I do beard lineups, and I do um, hair textures, fades, tapers. That's what I do, you know. And um, just having that skilled trade helps me out because being in the industry, I know my craft, I know my timing, and being backstage, everything is timed, you know. Like, you could have a DJ coming back here and like, hey, 15-minute haircut, I need it right now. Perfect. Good to go. You know, um, you have other artists that has more more leeway on time where like it's an hour, two hours. Take your time if needed. That's brilliant. Yeah. And actually, if you go to the Idle Hand Collective Instagram page, which you can find by either searching them on Instagram or you can go to the Booksy Biz page and find them through our Instagram. If you go there, you can actually look at some beautiful braiding work that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But something that you said there, I want to highlight really quickly. It is important to know for this type of event what you can do, what you can't, and what your parameters are. So if you know that you can do a cut and it's going to take you 20 minutes, don't agree to a cut for an artist that has 10 minutes who's going to then go on stage. <laughs> Hopefully you wouldn't get asked that, but that's, yeah. that's a real, it's, uh, I just wanted to highlight just the brilliance of that, not misrepresenting your skill in that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. So that's brilliant. And now we're going to jump back up to Yazl question and I will share the screen. Um, but Kevin, tell us a little bit what you know about this because Yaslin is asking, so how do we get a chance to work at festivals? Oh, perfect. Well, we're going <laughs> to pull up the screen for you guys to see. Bam, right there. You want to get discovered backstage? This is how. Julie will go over the details of how you're going to start to uh, sign up with uh, the Book C page and, and uh, get your account started. So that way you have these opportunities to go. So I will drop this into the chat for everyone here. And also after this webinar is done, you will be getting an email with this link. But this is the Book C Get Discovered Backstage contest page. And this is an amazing contest that we are delighted to be able to offer in partnership with Idle Hand Collective and with our amazing ambassador community, such as Yukuza Barber. Uh, who you, you you may have noticed somewhere on the page. I mean, it, it's subtle, but you, you may see him there if, if you look. But so here's what you do. You come over here to where it says pick your gig. So you pick your gig. This is actually the last day that you will see Psycho Las Vegas on this list because what we're doing is about three weeks out from each festival, we remove that festival from the list and then we contact our first place winners. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But at the moment, you can see we have about 17 festivals here all around the country, Las Vegas, Wichita, Alton, Pittsburgh, Chicago, of course, um, Asbury Park, Ocean City, San Bernardino, Orlando. So it's important to take a look not only at the dates, but also at the location, because if you want to travel for it, that's absolutely amazing. 
But the important thing about this contest is what you are winning is the opportunity to work backstage. So neither Booksy nor Idle Hand is going to be managing anything along the lines of travel and things like that. So that is entirely on you. But if you're going, oh my gosh, well, I know that I'm going to be going to Chicago for Riot Fest regardless. And of course, I want to be back there. That's amazing. Then perfect. Take a look at that. So you'll see it down here, but I'll show it to you in a, in a little bit larger version as well. In order to enter, what you need is a Booksy profile with 10 or more reviews, an average score of 4.8 or higher, and awesome photos that show your work. And so you'll see this right on the How to Get Discovered Backstage page too. It has it all blown up here. And it also tells you about our contest judges, including one Eric from Idle Hand, who may or may not just pop up into the comments to say hey to everybody again. Um, but then you will be reached out to by our awesome Booksy team, and they will get connected with the winner for each event. So I just want to emphasize, if you know that you're interested in Cycle Las Vegas, you're also interested in Four Chord Fest, you're also interested in Furnace Fest, you can fill out the form once for each event that you're interested in. So if I'm interested in Cycle Las Vegas, I'm going to pick that, fill out my information, hit submit, and then I can come back to the form again, and I can pick Four Chord Fest. So I just want to emphasize that because you don't have to feel like you only get to pick your number one thing. Every festival that you are interested in, you have the ability to apply for. But do make sure that you look. If your favorite customer has already booked you for September 8th and they have to be there because their cat's bar mitt happening the next day and they, they have to get lined up clean for that, then probably that's not the exact festival that you want to apply for. So do keep that in mind. Um, okay, and then I will drop this link in the chat in just a moment. But Kevin, can you do me a favor? So you had a you had a particular booksy barber that you wanted us to take a look at their booksy page as an example of a great booksy page. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's, um, he's a huge influencer. As uh, his name is MRK the barber. He's um, has a great following base, a great great barber. Um, he's a booksy ambassador as well. I want you guys to take a look at this page and see, you know, how professional it is lined up and everything and uh, use this as a reference to your page. You know, um, I also got to ask the question too, you know, like, Hey, can we transfer our reviews over to, to Booksy? And uh, yes, yes, it's confirmed that yes, you can transfer your reviews over to Booksy. That's very important as well. Yes, absolutely. Our team will 100% help you do that. They were doing that before the contest. They'll, they'll continue doing it after because it, we know how important it is to be able to keep your reviews. So if that's something that you're interested in, once you've signed up for the contest, you should see a follow-up email that gives you a link and auto generates an email for you to ask for help with getting your reviews transferred. But otherwise you can always reach out in the Booksy app or just send an email of your own volition. But so before we move on, just to emphasize this page, this is a great example. Like, thank you so much for this one, Kevin. So MRK the Barber, one, just like Kevin said, great Instagram page, like awesome, phenomenal content. But when you come onto their Booksy page, you've got this beautiful, clear logo that tells you exactly who they are. It's completely tied to them. Then you come down to their services and they have not only the service list, they have a little bit of detail on it. Um, it's just very, very clean, very nice. And then they've got these beautiful, beautiful photos of their work, which are just, you can see they're not, they're not overproduced. They don't have a ton going into them. They're just clean photos that show their work. And that is what our team of judges is going to be looking for. And then they'll come down here and look at these reviews as well. So definitely apply for the contest, pick all of the different festivals that you want to work for. And then if your clients haven't been leaving reviews, you know, send them a message and say, Hey, would love to get a review of that fade that you got of those awesome braids that we did of the dreadlocks. Cause I just saw Louise Louise in the comments say I can do dreadlocks. So that's a plus, which it totally is. So if you've got those things, make sure that they are leaving you reviews and let them know that your clients can also, they can even put a photo into their review if they want. And that's really amazing. And one more thing before we move on, I do just want to let you know if Photos of your work are the things that give you the great anxiety. I can understand. <laughs> um, I'll drop this link in the chat as well. Our next webinar on August 22 is with Joel Torres Style, and it is focused entirely on taking professional photos of your work with your phone. It is another completely free Booksy webinar. This one will even give you a CE credit if you are in the states of Illinois or Florida. So highly recommend you checking that out. It's going to be 
So good. Um, but now, now we'll go back to people's questions. I'll stop sharing the screen and I'll get those links added to the chat. But this is, at, just as Kevin said, this is a great example of a booksy page that you can just tell anyone coming here, they're going to feel very comfortable knowing exactly who this barber is and what they do. It's a very clear, concise representation of their work. So thank you so much, because that's just a beautiful example. So, okay. Shout out to MRK. Yes, absolutely. So let's get you some more questions and I'll go dropping those links in. So um, Salvador, hopefully that answered your question about what the requirements are to work for these types of festivals in terms of this contest. Um, Kevin, is there anything else that you'd like to add about the most important things to you for when you're working at a festival? Yeah, I say um, the, the beginning stage, the opportunity stage. So um, you guys have to pay for your own travel, but but having this opportunity, it, it goes further than that. You know, this this could lead up to you being a personal barber, personal stylist for this artist. You know, whoever it is, like you could be that person, that braider for them. They could take you around the world. They could take, they could fly you out, but hey, I want a haircut and I don't trust any other barber stylist but you. So, you know, I'm going to fly you out or whatever. So having this opportunity, I, I would have paid to be, be at these opportunities. You know what I'm saying? So like the opportunity is growth and growth is very important. Absolutely. Excellent points. So everyone, I've just dropped those two links in the chat for both the Get Discovered Backstage contest as well as for our next webinar on August 22, taking professional photos with your phone. You don't have to go and click those right now. All of these links will still exist after today's webinar is done, just so you know. So more questions. Let's get more of these questions. These are great questions, guys. Keep them coming. So let's see. Louise Louise says, awesome. Thanks for that, Yakuza. Um, ooh. Here is a great question, a little bit of a pivot, but I like this. Lily is wondering, when I use my trimmers to take off all neck beard hair, sometimes the hair doesn't stand up and I can't take it off with my electric. Do you have any tips on just a good quick technique to help get some of that beard hair that's laying down in order to finish with the electric shaver? Like a ways to get the neck super clean, which I could see making a very big difference in this context. Yeah, definitely. So you got to take, take note of the growth pattern of the hair. So when you're cutting hair and like, let's say, you know, someone's beard hair is everywhere, going this way, going that way, you'll want to cut against the grain, right? With the trimmers first to bring it down to a short length. And then you apply your electric shaver afterwards, because if it's growth, where it's like longer length hair, you can't cut it down with the shaver. It has to be a buzz first. So bring it down with the trimmers and cut against the grain pattern. And then you should sh your shavers, electric shavers to have that cleaner, smoother look. Thanks Lily for that. That's great. Great question and phenomenal answer too. I hope everyone here is taking notes and don't worry, this webinar will be available on YouTube after the fact. So here is another really good question back to the actual backstage world. Salisha wonders, do the celebrities or their managers usually have a picture of what they want or are how is it, you know, DJ Scheme sits in your chair. What, what do you do to help you get what you think will look best on them? Is it, is he giving you a picture or what are you getting? Sometimes they show you pictures. Sometimes they just, uh, it's just word of mouth. They'll, they'll tell you, hey, I want it like this. And uh, being a barber, being a stylist, being a professional, you guys understand that hair consultation is very important. So before, before even picking up your clipper or your, or your shears, understand their hair first, understand what they want to create, what, what their vision is. So once you get that down, then you pick up your clippers. So understand first on what they want. So I will go into details and specifics about, hey, do you want a razor? Do you want to bring this length down? Do you want to trim the mustache? Do you want a lineup? Like, like talk to me, you know, because hair consultation is very important. And there's nothing worse than giving someone a haircut that they don't want. Yes, nothing worse on, on anyone's size. The thumbs up are coming in for that one. So Michaela says, for Booksy, what are you looking for in our profiles? So just to just to go into slightly more depth on this, um, what is so important is that you have 10 or more reviews. You want those reviews to have a 4.8 or higher score and photos of your work. You really want the photos to show as clearly and, and honestly, just as cleanly as possible what you do. They, You don't need to have you know, the, the most amazing lighting where the person has a full backdrop behind them. Sometimes that can even make it harder. We just want to see what you can do when you're doing what you do. That was 
a little bit convoluted, but I hope that that makes sense. So it's really about making sure that your work is reflected in your Booksy page. Kevin, do you have any further comments on on things that when you're looking at people online that makes a difference for you? Yes, uh, definitely. You, you know, you don't have to necessarily get a, a expensive camera and take a picture of, of your haircuts. You know, um, iPhones are just as great nowadays, you know, and I like to see more organic photos, right? Mm. Instead of like Photoshopping and, and editing, whatever. So organic photos play a very important part too in Booksy because for nowadays people know the difference when you're using enhancements, when you're using Photoshop. So organic photos are very important. Absolutely. And I will add one more thing that can make a huge difference here. It's it's certainly not absolutely required, but I would encourage every single person who has a booksy profile, any sort of profile, have your social media attached to that. Because, you know, if I'm looking at two people for this contest and one's Kevin and, you know, one's uh, John Smith, and I'm looking at Kevin's page and he's got his Instagram right there and I can just go and be like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that work. Look at these. Like it it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And you have such an opportunity to then be connected to all of the photos and all of the stories that may not quite make it onto your booksy profile every time. So mm -hmm. actually thinking Salvador, Salisha, I see your questions. We will get to them in a moment, but thinking about posts and stories, when we were preparing for this webinar, you told me something very interesting. How do you, when you're in the moment, you know, I'm going to keep using DJ scheme. DJ scheme is in your hair, is in your chair. You are backstage. How do you navigate the fact that you are doing this cut, but you also want to be promoting yourself on social media, showing this work that you're doing? Tell us what you do. Oh, great. So one of the most important things is uh, branding yourself, right? And then after branding yourself, getting up there, you want to, uh, what is it, work with other brands as well. You know, for example, when, when I go backstage with Booksy, I record videos of the haircut and I start uh, tagging the artist, I tag the, the idle hand and I tag Booksy in it. So that way you're getting exposure from idle hand. You're getting exposure from Booksy. On top of that, you're getting exposure for, from the artist. And then that all navigates towards you as your own brand. Right. So every single time when you're doing these backstage events, don't forget, shoot the videos, get the pictures and get the tags, get the ad, get the follow. You know, I have I have a bunch of followers from backstage because they, they just follow me regardless. You know, they ask me, oh, I love this haircut. What's your IG? I'll show them. Next thing you know, I'm getting I'm getting followers from verified accounts. It's crazy because like all of these blue check marks. I'm like, wow, all these followers on my on my IG are, are verified. So getting, getting that, that, that exposure is very important, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And an excellent point. And don't forget, as soon as something is in your stories, you can always add that into your highlights. Really, you can do things like that so that you can go and find them later. It's very important. Um, I am looking for this question. Uh, once I find the person's name, I will shout them out. There it is, Jessica. Jessica is wondering, is there a full setup backstage? Like, is there a barber chair? So tell us a little bit about that. You know, when, when take it, take us through your morning, how about? So you get there, you you park your car, you get off your lift or whatever you do. What does that look like to where you get into the tent and you're setting up? I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole process, okay? Because uh, I just brought my uh, videographer recently and um, he just kept thanking me like, yo, this is such a great opportunity. Like, like this is behind the scenes you know, from the parking pass, from, 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 from catering to everything. So right when you check in, you know, you check in, you show your ID, bam, they give you wristbands. Wristbands that, that um, says uh, either um, artists, productions, or crew, or uh, creators. And those wristbands get you to these access. Like I'm cutting through corners, I'm going backstage. I, I'm, I'm saying hello to the medical team. Like, like these access is crazy, right? And when I'm driving my car, I got the, the parking pass as well. Parking pass right into my car. I drive up to the security. I'm like, hey, uh, I believe I can park here, right? This pass says so. They look at the pass and they're like, yep, sounds about right. You get parking right in front, sir. So just having that access is, is crazy, right? And uh, the next thing is, is going to the event, checking in, checking your stuff, checking your, your clippers, uh, going through uh, security and uh, going through the the artist lounge. So most of it is at the artist lounge. So you're surrounded by trailers and these trailers are artists and you will see the name right in the center of the trailer saying, 
uh, Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, Meg Thee Stallion, and, and they're, they're here. And guess what? You're there right next to them. You, you get to see artists pass by back and forth, like, 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 like everywhere. And I'm over here like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, hey. Oh, uh, what's that? I, I met P. Diddy's son backstage. I saw Wiz Khalifa. I was like, wow. Post Malone was back there. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I, I'm here and they're three feet away from me. And I get to cut hair and they, I get to showcase my talent. They could pass by. They can see what I'm doing. They could request for a haircut. And uh, it's just all like also like exclusive. Right, the access, the 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 content, the the followers, the the haircuts, everything is just so exclusive and so important. Yeah, that's really amazing. I know last year from one of the festivals that you were at, you actually got to go up on stage, and you have this great video just of you just panning across the crowd at this amazing music festival. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that that was a crazy one because um after I cut up a DJ scheme. I asked him, hey, how dope would it be if I was on stage shooting a video? And right away, he was like, come with me. I'm like, he's like, yeah, just, just roll with me. I'm like, okay, cool. So as I'm going through backstage, as, as I'm going on, you know, security is like looking at me like, who's this guy? I'm like, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> just, just know, just know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I get invited on stage and, I, and I, I'm chilling right here off of the stage with them. I'm recording this crazy crowd. You guys probably saw it on my IG and Booksy Abyss as well. This crazy crowd getting getting high, jumping up and down. I'm over here like, wow, I'm a barber. <laughs> I'm a barber back here. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, great, great question from Salvador here. Salvador's wondering, are enhancements a must for these celebrities? So are, do you notice trends like that showing up for, for these backstage events as well? It's uh, better to have it. To, uh, to, to not need it, right? So if it's needed, it's a good thing that you have it. So even if you don't believe in enhancements, I would bring it just in case because you never know what they want. And if you're one of those barbers, like I don't believe in enhancements, I don't roll like that. Well, guess what? If, if a celebrity's in front of you, oh, can you put some enhancements on my hair? And you're over here, I, I don't believe in enhancements. You know, guess what? They're gonna go to the next barber. Be over prepared, guys. Very, very good point. Uh, follow up to your to to a slightly earlier comment around doing stories and video posts. Louise Louise says, "Are you saying to hashtag my videos? Say like I'm at a show attending. Still use all my barber hashtags and tag the event bands event for more exposure." And I'll ask you to tag on and answer that as well in terms of when you're working with an organization like Booksy, like Idle Hands Collective at this event. So can you talk to us about tagging and hashtagging for that? Because that's a great question. Yes. So whatever city you're in, uh, you could definitely hashtags. Hashtags has the opportunity to explore um, more on the discovery page, right? So if you're at HeartFest, I would do hashtag HeartFest 2022. If you're at EDC, hashtag EDC, because when people are clicking on this link, they get to see your post onto that discovery page when they're, when they're looking up the hashtags. So do hashtags, tag the event, tag Booksy, tag, tag Idlehand, and tag um. I would I will retag yourself so that way people can just click on it, right? And then tag the artist that you're cutting up as well. So you never know who you're cutting backstage. You know, if you're going to um to a EDC festival and you're more into hip hop, I would still everybody that I cut, I would still tag them. Get their IG because you never know who you're gonna cut. One of the guys I've I've uh, styled his hair and I cut him. Um, I was like, hey, what's your IG? You know, I thought he's just a regular guy. I clicked on his IG. Nice, 937,000 followers. Perfect, that's exactly, and he reposted me after that. So getting that content, getting those tags, the hashtags, it's so, it's so important for yourself to help you grow as a brand and as a person. That's brilliant. Okay, here's a little more technique focused of a question. Lily is wondering, do you have any ergonomic friendly tips? I found myself bending, standing in weird positions. So I think this sort of points back to being prepared for things, but in especially in this sort of event where you know, you're know you going there, you can't guarantee that you're not just gonna, you might have two hours of downtime, but you might only have two minutes and you have person after person in your chair. Yeah. What tips do you have for ergonomics, but also just for like literal physical well-being? when you're doing this sort of a thing? Uh, before the events, stretch. Every morning, stretch. <laughs> it, it will benefit you in the long run, I promise. 
So, uh, you know, stretching your arms, stretching or whatever you, it is you need to do your legs before you actually start these events. Because, you know, sometimes this, um, the events is far away, the, the artist lounge is far away, and you might have to have a little walk, right? So you walk to the artist lounge and while you're cutting, make sure that posture is very important, right? Your posture, like I, I see a lot of barbers and stylists, they, they like to cut hair like this, where the neck is bending down. You don't want to do that, right? Let's slouch down a little bit. Uh, spread your legs that way like you have that distance you have you have uh, that distance to create between you and your client so posture is very important when it comes to cutting hair because if you have bad posture well guess what after cutting five celebrities five artists your back's gonna be hurting and you're gonna you're gonna tap out on them right exactly i want to highlight just a couple of comments from people before we keep going and everyone your questions are brilliant we will happily use the whole time to answer exactly what you're asking so that's great keep them coming uh louise says i was at a show once the bouncer was air dropping his ig rapper account to people in the crowd it's a smart idea and yeah <laughs> and yes. Salisha says man this sounds like so much fun can't wait to be selected i'm a licensed cosmetologist barber and master loctician i'm ready that sounds like a brilliant combination of stuff. And if I can give you one piece of advice, make sure that all of that is very clearly highlighted on your booksy page. I'm sure that it is, but make sure that it's out there spelled out really nicely with all of your details and things it makes a huge difference. Okay. Now another question. What if I'm not, ah, okay. So this is an interesting, this is an interesting balance of of working at something versus attending. So what if I'm not working at an actual event, but I want to be targeting a band or a band crew if I'm just attending the show? So this is a little bit off topic, but I do think it's interesting. When when do you find yourself tagging people in events and trying to get people's attention if you're not actively part of them? Do you have any tips on that? Yes, definitely. Uh, make sure that the hashtag, right? The hashtag is very important too. So if you're not doing the tags, you, you, you're, you're losing that exposure, unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? So get that exposure that you want, get the exposure for yourself. And um, it's just, when you're creating these content, it helps your accolades, right? It helps your, your, your resume, your background. So having those, those proof of the hashtags and the tags, it's all for yourself and all for the future brands. So along the lines, another company could, could reach out to you, hey, we, we like your personality, we like you as a barber. Uh, what else you got? I cut backstage. I cut backstage. I cut up a lot of artists. I, I do this. I travel a lot. Bam. That's that's a, a big thing in your resume. So mm -hmm. just getting that that brand for yourself, like I said, like like you're very important to yourself, right? So build the accolades, get as much stuff on your resume as possible. And this is one of the biggest opportunities to have in your resume. I hope yeah. uh, that answers the question. <laughs> So shout out, oh, I, we got a heart reaction, so I it looks like it did. Um, so I'm going to tweak this question for you a little bit. So Salisha's wondering, off the top of your head, which festival is more hip hop and more R&B? So I'm going to tweak this a little bit because um, I think we have, we have this awesome opportunity with this expert here. Do you think, is there value in working at festivals that maybe aren't your exact musical cup of tea? Like if I'm only hip hop that's listened to, should I just not be trying to go work at a festival that does pop? Like, talk to me about that. What's the value there? No, I think there's value being present, right? Mm. So you got to understand this. The value is to brand yourself. The value is to be present at these events. The, the value is to network. The value is growth, change, right? Getting out of your comfort zone. The comfort zone is, is, is uh, where dreams go to die. So <laughs> being uncomfortable is uh, it's a good thing sometimes. Being uncomfortable to, to explore more industry, more, more, more music industry, more, more artists. So I, I'm a hip hop guy too. I'm an R&B guy as well. But I like to go to these other festivals too because these are different kind of uh, network base. Mm. Right, I get to network with with uh, EDM DJs. I get to network with their management team, and guess what? Their management team can possibly manage the R and B side, right? So you'd never know who you're talking to. So just go out there, go out there, explore, get that engagement, get that network, because you never know. Like I said, who you're cutting. These management team, these these production teams, they could work at Coachella, they could work at Rolling Loud, but if you're not at these events, then you're not going to show up regardless. Just yeah. show up. Be present and show out. 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you highlighted something really great there. So let's let's tangent for just a moment because you, you've told us a bit about who you are, but get, can you give us a little bit more on, on your bona fides? Like you travel a lot, not just for festivals. Can you tell us a little bit about the other types of barbering work that you do? Yes, yes. So um, I'm a, a, the lead educator for Law Professional. So mm -hmm. I travel a lot for education. I do a barber expo. I do classes. Uh, I, I, I do... And I travel everywhere, you know, it could be a small town like like uh, New Mexico, it could be in Washington, it could be in Seattle, I go everywhere to to uh, disseminate education, and as well at the backstage work and as well as driving to VIP clients. So I'm back and forth, I'm everywhere. And, uh, you know, I think I'm still living on Texas time, I just got back <laughs> from Texas, and I went straight to Hardfest, right? So I was driving back and forth, flying back and forth. And, uh, you know, now with you guys, you know, the webinar, I had a class in the morning and then now I'm doing this webinar. I'm, I'm just everywhere. I'm, yeah. I'm very productive <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just <laughs> doing it, you know? Absolutely. I'm actually going to take this opportunity to just drop your Instagram one more time for everyone in here. Just, just so that they have you just in case they don't. Um, but definitely you, you really want to be following this guy. He's up to some big stuff and he's got just beautiful content. So, okay. A couple more comments from the audience. Uh, Jessica says, shout out to New Mexico. We want you to come back. So <laughs> now, now, maybe now you know. soon. So, but that's, that's the sort of thing we're following on Instagram. That makes a difference. So, and Lily, ah, Lily says, I met you once in San Diego, stand up guy. Nice. Thank you. So, okay, you're traveling all over and, you know, we've, we've touched on different types of education and stuff that you do, but let's, let's, let's rein it back into festivals for a minute. So you've told us about being prepared in terms of the tools that you're bringing, you know, having the, the actual hairdryer, having cords for things, all, all like all really big things. Are there any, um, maybe non tools that, that you always make sure of, like, what do you do to make sure that you're set when you've packed, you know, two days before in terms of the weather, in terms of the terrain, that sort of a thing. What, what do you do to make sure that you're not going to be like caught flat footed there? Yeah. I say two of the most important things is, um, check the weather because, uh, I've worked, uh, in San Bernardino with jeans and, and a long sleeve t-shirt and a hat and, you know, high top socks with high top shoes. And it was 103 degrees. And I'm like, oh, no. I should have, that's my fault. That's my fault. I own to that, right? So check the weather. Check the weather. Uh, pack accordingly. Uh, even if you're traveling, like 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 I said, this is an opportunity, guys. You see an uh, event that you want to go to, travel there. Check the weather. Check check uh, the 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 prices for airfare. Check check your 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 Ubers. Check check uh, food. I'm a big food guy, so I like to explore and I like to uh, explore different restaurants. So just check your surroundings. Check the event surrounding. And uh, the second most important thing when it comes to cutting backstage is uh, right here. Mm. <laughs> yep. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm talking to <laughs> is the uh, artists and everything, you know? <laughs> I, I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't wanna talk like this. Also, how did you want your hair cut? <laughs> how, how did you want it? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, when I'm chewing gum, I, I, I'm confident. Yeah. Everybody's more confident when chewing gum. You know, I don't, I don't the last thing I want is me cutting an artist and then, you know, oh, did you want your lineup? And he goes to this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no. I would like to line up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that onion bag breakfast, not serving. Never his... happened. <laughs> yeah, the cafeteria at the event was delicious. You know, they had shrimp scan pea with garlic. <laughs> that's actually, that's a, a really good point. So I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of us in, in the audience don't have as much experience with this what might people expect to see backstage like you mentioned the fact that that tips are a possibility which is of course something that that mm -hmm. no one can guarantee because it depends on the individual person that's how tips work but what are things yeah. that that people might see backstage and to take the sort of i guess downer approach but like the really professional approach what are the things that you try to be aware of backstage when it comes to what's available and what you want to do about that do you know what i mean mm. yeah so um one of the best benefits for uh, this opportunity that you guys are getting is uh, seeing the show itself, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not only cutting backstage, but you get to go out there and explore, you get to hit different stages. So what I recommend is, you know, look at the lineup, look at the, the festival lineup. Oh, 
this guy is showing at, at uh, 8 p.m. This person is showing at 7 p.m. I'm going to take a break from the barbershop. I'm going to go over there and check it out in the VIP area and uh, just have a good time. So you're having a great time. You're cutting hair. You're networking. You're back there. And uh, you get to see these celebrities, right? So what I would do is bring business cards, bring, bring uh, what is it, uh, flyers, bring, bring uh, QR codes, bring the little pop thing that, that, that you attach to your phone and just scan it, you know? Yeah. So all that is networking, you know? You go around, you see... I don't know, let's say Wiz Khalifa, like, hey, Wiz, like, I love you as an artist. If you need a haircut, check me out sometime. Here's my car. Bam. Yeah. Networking. Yep. I'll throw in one more thing there for everyone here, just because we're we're talking on the wide world of digital media right now. Don't forget to double check the link that you have on your Instagram or whatever your main social media page is. Check what link you have set there before you go to network at any of these events. So if I'm going to go you know, go to the Yakuza Barber Instagram page right now. I'll see that you've got this webinar. I can sign up for it. That's great. And it's really present to what you're doing right now. It's not just like a random link for something that happened six months ago. Yep. <laughs> so just, just see that often. out there. <laughs> and if you haven't set up the book now button, make sure that you set up a book now button. It'll make your life so much easier just in that way again. So, okay. Yep. Another, another question from the chat. When you do festivals, are you artist specific or do you cut multiple artists at festivals? So I guess let's kind of focus on what has your experience been in terms of like how many people you're seeing, what you know about them when they sit down, like how, take it, take us through that, you know, there's no one in your chair and then someone sits in your chair. How does that work? Yeah. Um, so you, you get to, you can kind of see who is popular and, and who is, uh, you know, like not, not as mainstream. Um, you know, when you, when they have like a group of two or three people around them, they're like, Hey, can I kind of get a haircut. Yeah, for sure. Have a seat, you know? And like I said, I treat everybody like they're somebody, right? I, I don't, I don't discriminate. I don't, I don't do any of that. If, if you want a haircut, I got you. I'm going to treat you like an A-list celebrity because I never know who it is. Right. So it could be Beyonce's little brother. It could be uh, Jay-Z's cousin. You never know. So treat everybody like they're somebody. And, um, when you're looking around the artist lounge, you can see who's big because they have an entourage with them, mm. right? They have entourage, they have their management, they have uh, seven people around them. They have, they have two photographers, like one videographer and, you know, and, and you're, you're allowed to like, Hey, you know, right over here, if you need to get laced up before the set, I got you. If you need to get a trim, an eyebrow trim, your mustache or whatever, I got you. And most of the time it works. Most of the time they come here to the barbershop with their entourage and they're taking pictures of you they're taking videos of you cutting their hair so that's what you that's what you get to see backstage that's what you get to encounter backstage absolutely um so michaela shouted something out about says i live in a small town so networking might be hard however i know my town is the town everyone passes through from oregon to the bay so you know what that makes me think is what you said before about having that really easy QR code, very visible places and using hashtags so that if somebody's passing through and they're like, Oh God, I just, I, I desperately need this lined up or whatever, you know, that's where that mm -hmm. using hashtags makes such a difference. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So, and then Salvador has a question, which I'll give you a brief answer and then I'll let Kevin go into more detail. Salvador says, you mentioned that you brought your videographer with you. Are these events allowing you to bring a plus one? So, from the contest perspective, just so that you know, um, winning to go to, say, the Riot Fest contest with Booksy and Idle Hand Collective, that is a win for you. So that is something to know is that because it's from a professional perspective, this would be you going, not you and your significant other, you and someone else from your shop. It would be you going. But then do you want to tell us, Kevin, just a little bit about um, how the barbers or barbers and braiders or whomever is back there, how they might work together in terms of helping each other with content? Yeah. Uh, so lucky for you, Idleham brings photographers. They have photographers there for you. So the people are behind the scenes shooting pictures of you cutting and everything. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I brought a videographer because, you know, Booksy and, uh, and Law and Idleham, uh, I, I want to help uh, build that brand for them. So I brought a, a videographer out and, you know, I shot stuff for the, for the companies. But uh, as for yourself, we have a photographer. We have some videographers backstage for you at al almost all these events. So you don't have to worry about that. 
Exactly. And um, just of note as well, if you go to the main contest page, you will see down at the bottom of it here. Let me get this pulled up so that you can so that everyone can see it with me um, on our contest page down at the bottom of it. Right down here, you can see see who's made it to the winner's circle. And if you come over to our winner's circle, as winners are announced and confirmed, each of them gets listed here, which means that if someone is searching your name online, it will come up that you're on the winner's circle. They will also be going out in in on Instagram through Booksy Biz and Idle Hand Collective. So we'll be putting out stories with you, things like that, to really emphasize this. We want to get to celebrate every single person who wins. So just so you know, this is a thing and stories on Instagram will be a thing as well. They're simply not there yet because we haven't quite got our first winner yet. So, you know, hint, hint, if you were thinking that Psycho Las Vegas sounded like it might be good, uh, that will be closing by end of day today. But you can still at this moment um, submit for Psycho Las Vegas, which is August 19 through 21 in, as you might imagine, Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't, I don't know if I could share this, but uh, we do have... Um, do you mind pulling up my Instagram again? Absolutely. We have a, a videographer coming, a top-notch videographer coming at three random events. Three random events. And we're going to create some content with a winner. Do you mind pulling up my EDC video? Help me this with your videographer. EDC. Is it this one? No. This one. I think it's, no, it's the one with the fireworks. Uh, should be this one. I think you clicked on it earlier. I did. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so this one, this one, right? This is a videographer and he's going to show up at three random events to shoot with you, to, to, uh, to get some content with you and to build this content for you and Booksy and Idle Hand. So you could be one of those lucky winners that gets to create this content. And not to mention the fact that, uh, companies with corporate Instagram pages like Booksy, we love to be tagged and seeing what our users are up to. So when people are posting things and they're tagging us like that, we love to shout that out. So, you know, say you're the winner and going to EDC Vegas, you can always look and see what people are posting in the EDC Vegas. And you could add, if you're doing a carousel post, you could you know, these are several of my photos. And this fourth one here is this awesome video from Yakuza Barber, who is also there. So finding those opportunities to be connecting with people and to be sharing content, whether you're sharing it as collaborators or just sharing as reposting tagging is really, really valuable as well. So do always keep that in mind as an option. I think I left another important thing out too, is uh, there's not only artists backstage, there's actress, actors, influencers, uh, IG influencers, TikTok influencers. So a lot of these, these uh, people, are there backstage and artist lounge hanging out too. So you don't only get to target the DJs and the artists, you get to target influencers, actors, actress. That is an excellent point, incredibly important. And that's where, again, just making sure that everything is ready when you get there, that your booksy page looks exactly the way that you'd want, you know, anyone from me to Beyonce to see it immediately, that your booksy page looks that way, that your Instagram page looks that way. It's just wonderful. Um, so we are almost at the end of our time. I see one last question, uh, oh, two more. So uh, Michaela is wondering, so if you win, when you go, would you just tell people, hey, I'm here if you need a haircut style, et cetera, how do you get the work? So that's a really good point and, and you're the perfect person to answer this. So you are back there in the tent in the official tent for Booksy and Idle Hand Collective. So you're not actually having to go like, hey, I'm Yakuza Barber to people walking past. People are being brought to you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a big tent with barber shops and, and products and, um, you know, um, the brand and everything. They will see you because we last, uh, was it last night, the, the weekend, we were dead center right mm. there in the middle of the artist lounge. So whoever passed by to go through their stage, they saw barber chairs, they saw us cutting, they saw us braiding. So you wouldn't need to to market yourself. You can definitely, yes, pass out your cards and everything. Tell them you cut hair, but you're, you'll be noticed, you'll, you'll be seen, trust. 
Perfect. And and Eric from Idle Hand actually just chimed in on the chat as well. The Booksy link goes out to the fest ahead of time. So all the artists and the management as well now. So that's going to be hugely helpful. So they'll have that reminder in advance as well. It won't just be day of, will they catch it? And we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I do think it's important. So I'm going to hand you this one as well. Um, Salisha Wonders is working backstage paid. How does, how does that work? So tell us about what what is involved and what isn't, and then what might happen. So t take us through that just a little bit. Yes, definitely. So it's not it's not a paid event, you know, like I said, um, it's an opportunity for you, but you do get to accept tips from the artists, the DJs, the management team. And uh, these guys, I'm telling you, they, they pay out. You know, I think I did a, a beard lineup, literally. I did no haircut, just a beard. And the artist like, here, here you go, here's 90 bucks. And I'm like, I can't even charge this much out of my shop, you know? So, so $90 for just a beard trim. And I was like, do you want to massage your shoulders too? Do you want a back rub? <laughs> like, like I, I feel bad taking this $90 with just lining up your beard, you know? So, uh, you get, you do get tipped out, uh, by the artist. Uh, sometimes you don't, but most of the times you do. Uh, but like I said, it's an opportunity for you to grow. And an important thing to note here is that's why we would argue that the most important things are to look at the dates that work for you and the locations that work for you rather than like, you know, um, absolutely, absolutely psycho Las Vegas, like just set everything about it sounds amazing. But if I'm aware that I've already got people booked on those dates or that it doesn't work for me to arrange for transportation lodging out there, then that's probably not the event that I want to apply for because it's less about am I... I mean, obviously you want to hear music that you're going to love, but these are all talented artists at all of these contests around the country. So um, to really take the time and look at what are the dates that work for you, what are the locations that work for you is very, very valuable. Now, I'm going to take a quick moment. I'm just dropping one final link. It says upcoming education. So this is the link to our education webinars page. You can also find this link on our Instagram, on any of our social media. On this page, you'll see all of our upcoming Booksy webinars. So I just want to highlight our two next ones for you. On August 22, we have Taking Professional Photos with Your Phone, which is going to be absolutely amazing. It's led by Joel Torres Style. It's going to be brilliant. And if you're struggling at all ever, and I think all of us do from time to time, on how to really get the photos to show what we want to show for the work that we're doing, this is going to be an absolutely phenomenal class for that. And this class will involve a CE credit for our Illinois and Florida users as well. And then if this webinar ends and you go, oh, you know, I have some follow-up questions about what it looks like doing the festival scene in the fall. Well, on September 12th, at this same time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, we will have backstage with Bird Mena. Bird is another of our Booksy ambassadors, and he is also... Uh, one of our key players in the festival scene, and he'll be answering yet more questions, talking to you about what it's been like doing festivals this past year. So those are just two of many upcoming opportunities to get education, to get connected on the digital scene, and to just learn more about what's going on. So just wanted to put that out there for you. And then in our last minute here, Kevin, Yakuza Barber, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything that you'd like to leave everyone with today? Uh, definitely, uh, take, take advantage of the opportunity, mm. you know, um, you don't be scared of growth, you know, change is coming and, uh, you need to change with the industry to, uh, further your craft. So definitely take advantage of the opportunity, uh, get out there, get connected, network. It will benefit you in the long run. That's beautiful. Love that. I will add just one more thing. And that is that if there is anyone else in your circle who you think would benefit from this type of contest, from being involved in this type of world, whether they're a barber, a stylist, a braider, even if they're nail techs who do phenomenal short work, the sort of things that guitarists might like to get themselves just cleaned up before they're going on stage, let them know about this contest as well, because they're really, there are opportunities for, for winners, for people to get discovered backstage all around the country. And we we would just, we'd love to see everyone get more and more awareness from this. So I'm Julia from Booksy. This is Kevin Yakuza Barber. Thank you so much for joining us all today. Hope that you got something out of this. Hope to see you at future education events. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>